welcome to another edition of So They Say. I'm Kate, glad to have all of you with us. Heard all those introductions. Uh, and today, talking about introductions, it's a guy that needs no introductions, but deserves the very best one. 25 time world champ, Trevor Brazil. I'm giving you a big round of applause, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Kate. Had we been a live show, we'd have the audience, the fireworks, I'd play some music, you could dance your way out. We would have, we would have done it all. Yeah, well, I, we could, we could have used the pyro. I would save, save everybody from my dancing if we could. <laughs> no, not a dancer? I thought I read somewhere you would agree to go on Dancing with the Stars. Well, I mean, I didn't say I would agree to win it. I just said I'd agree to go on it, I guess. <laughs> the try, that's, that's all you yeah, need. That's right, that's right. Salsa, little cha-cha-cha. That's uh, maybe the faster, the, the better for me. <laughs> Coming from my line of work. Yeah, you do things pretty quick. Uh, well, how's life been? How's the family life on the ranch? I mean, it's been different. I mean, you take coming off of a 20 something year career of rodeo down to semi retirement in itself is a huge change. And obviously, the change that everybody's dealt with, you know, throughout all the quarantine and kind of the new norm, it's, uh, it's been a lot to take in. But I think uh, more than anything, just being able to spend so much more time with my family through both of those headlines has been uh, has been the best part of all of it. And you've been spending a lot of time, we were talking about with the kids, getting in the practice pin, some junior rodeo action happening now. So how's the coach Brazil? Are you just dad to them or are you the man in the practice man, pin? You'll have, to, uh, you'll have to ask them. I try my level best to just give some instruction and if it takes root great and if they want to do it their own that's what i tell everybody you know fundamentals are for everyone but uh at some point you got to take it and make it your own so i don't want everybody to do everything like i did or like anybody else did you take the best of everybody and and make it your own do you ever get the old yeah dad i've got this yeah well in a lot of sports, I do. Fortunately, in rodeo, uh, they've usually got a few kids around that uh, will remind them that, that I've had a little bit of success in that, in that <laughs> field. And so I don't get as much of that as I do in baseball, for sure. <laughs> hey, that's some wisdom there. That's good. And if you ever have to remind them, you just flash them one of those buckles. You got to <laughs> around, huh? <laughs> hey, speaking of buckles, you brought a couple for us. We want to do a little show and tell do you keep all of them with you i mean you polish them do you snuggle them <laughs> these i usually keep under my pillow no uh, they i have most of mine at nrs they have a display case for buckles and saddles uh if you haven't seen it it's it is uh it's an awesome store and they've done an awesome tribute right there to the front to uh a lot of the championships that i've won but uh i brought a few with me today Let's see, number, number one will be the first world championship I ever won, 2002. I hope you can see it with the glare there. But uh, this one changed, it really did. It changed probably the whole course of my career. That's why it was a no-brainer to grab this one first. Um, I had had some success in rodeo and just never got – over I guess the hump if you will but that buckle came down to the last round at the NFR and I had to you know a certain I had to win third or better and when I roped I won second and so just the confidence that that gave me probably changed the course of my career so drastically and I mean I do understand it but the magnitude will I guess we'll never know but it's uh that's super special to me. When you go back to after the final round and waiting to hear what way it was going because it was so close as far as earnings wise. Do you still remember the sound of them calling your name for that very first time and just exactly what it was like in that arena? Oh yeah. No, I mean, it's the fog and the lights is something that you won't ever forget. You know, you come in the back of behind the buck and shoots and you come out between there and, the fog machines and the, to a dark house and to a laser show, you know, when they're announcing your name, that's, 
that's a walk that every young cowboy or cowgirl dreams of right there. And that one looks just as polished as like you got it yesterday. That's because my wife wears that. She won't let anybody else wear that. She oh, works, yeah, that's the one? She works hard for that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> shattered. Stuff. That's a good one to have. All right. What else you got? I think you got one or two more laying around. Don't yeah. You? Um, <laughs> my next two are similar. Let's see. Well, they're all <laughs> pretty similar. They're all, <laughs> they're all the all-around buckles from these different years. Uh, but this one is 07. And this one is 2010. And they're both all around championships. Um, but these two are special because they came with two other world championships each. So those were the, I've won the triple crown two years in professional rodeo in 07 and 2010, each with a different combination of events. In 07, I won the tie down roping and the steer roping and the all around. And in 2010, I won the team roping, the tie down and the all around. So those years were. I mean, that was just a dream come true. It's so hard to, uh, when you're rodeoing, doing multiple events to uh, have everything go right in one event, you know, and win a world championship. But the year, uh, 2010 especially, to be able to win the tie-down roping and the team roping in the same year, uh, obviously catapulted me way up there in the all-around. So that was, uh, that will go in the books as one I'll never forget. Where do you go to dinner after the final night? Uh, you, you win those, you got the family there. What's that uh, night like after? You know, uh, it just, they, you go from, as soon as they take you on that walk up the, through the fog and up the stage, and once they kill the lights again, you're shuttled into a media room in the back of Thomas and Mack. It's, an, it's where the, the uh, basketball players have their practice gym, and that's the media, makeshift media room during the NFR. So you do interviews and tearful hugs with your family back there because they will they'll have ushers go get your family and uh, but by the time you get out of that everything is pretty much winding down even in Las <laughs> Vegas um, dinner's usually out uh, we usually had an after party at uh, the hotel that we always had to attend and so it was always it was always something and just the getting back up to the room and getting a hold to your family. That was always the most special part because everything else seemed really scripted and you were guided through and ushered through on everything till you got back to your room. And although you're mentally exhausted, your adrenal glands are shot. It's a, uh, it's a definitely just excitement, but it's a real peace too, because it's finally over because when you're in Vegas, everything, every day has so much pressure that goes along with that day that it's, uh, it's nice to finally get that 10th round over with out there. Order room service and call it a night, huh? That's right. And well, <laughs> what I didn't mention, this was, I really didn't win this buckle in the barrel racing. This is 2013 San Antonio stock show and rodeo. My wife, won the barrel racing there and that really set up her year in 2013 to come out of nowhere and make the national finals in the barrel race. And that was, that was probably the most special year to sit there and get to watch her compete after all the sacrifices she's made for me and tough and cliff and all the other guys in the family that, you know, were at the NFR and had been in the past to, to see her, realize her dreams out there that was really special that is so special and so great to see the two of you together and just that bond and the relationship over the years and being parents being family people so I'll tell you what it inspires me I've only been married a few years now but uh your guys's marriage definitely inspires me um I know she's got a lot of confidence in you did she let you get on those barrel horses back in the day <laughs> Yes, and I made sure everybody had their cameras in their pockets at the same time or check them at the door because I wasn't going to have any viral barrel racing videos out there. So, but yes, we uh, we always would go and talk about it and do a little tuning, and uh, it was like I say I really did felt like I was hoarse after she won that buckle. Uh, I did a lot of screaming in that year. I bet, I bet. Well, Some of it was even positive. No. Right. <laughs> You got that great 
partnership with your wife, but uh, well, you and Patrick Smith, you spent a lot of time together, and I heard it could be quite the prankster, something about black rice, the motorhome situation. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> That's a good that, one. Well, that, the only thing you have to know about Patrick Smith, and I love him like a brother, but anything that he says, we're just going to just back it off a few notches <laughs> because he embellishes better than he ropes. So... <laughs> That's one of the better planks anyone's ever pre played on me, though. It was, uh, and the thing is, it went on for so long. And uh, when you, I guess you just, a good friend of mine, Chad Baker, was rodeoing with us as well as Patrick Smith and with my family. And uh, we were just going down the road, big old family. And uh, Shadda had some black rice of or some sort. I don't know. I'm sure it was some really, really healthy rice, but I had never seen it. And uh, the guys, they thought it was pretty funny because they were looking to see what it was and some inadvertently spilt out somewhere. And we had thought it was rat poop or mouse poop. And, and uh, I hope you viewers are ready for a poop story, but uh, always it, uh, anything anyway we uh talked about it and we thought how could we have mice on the bus i mean we're going all over the country and i mean what mouse would be that brave anyway but anyway so they kind of saw that it worked and so they would plant little pieces of rice everywhere throughout the trailer and we would find it and it got to the point where my wife was either going to sell the bus or we were going to have to stay in hotels everywhere we went because they had started putting uh, the rice in our bed. Oh, no. <laughs> completely, completely freaked Shada out. But anyway, that's when they let her in on the deal because they didn't want to have to sell a bus in the middle of the summer or her have to go get hotel rooms everywhere we went. So uh, they let her in on the plot but not me and I, there's no telling how long that went and how many times I was looking I bought I went to Walmart and bought them out of mouse traps, glue traps mouse trap any any kind of mouse trap you could get and to no avail I never caught anything obviously and uh, they laughed the whole time so that was a good one did Patrick at one point eat it what yeah yeah he, the, when, when they I guess they after it rolled on about a month there and they got tired of having fun with me uh, he's like, I was like, when the mouse traps didn't work, I'm like, that can't, it, it's either gone or it's not a mouse. I don't know what it is, but these mouse traps aren't doing the trick. And he's like, acts like a big white hunter that he thinks he is. And he gets down there and he picks it up and he smells it. And then he tastes it. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's when he let me know that he's been jacking with me for about a month. For that long. A good thing he's a good enough friend to stop you before you actually sold the motorhome. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so was that the story? Before we started, you said you were thinking of a couple stories. Was that one you were thinking of? Well, um, when you're rodeoing, you get on a lot of planes. And so our travel agent would always put us together on a flight, preferably cross aisles so we could both have an aisle and talk and still have our you know, shoulder room, you do a lot of travel. You, you know, you know how that is. Oh yeah. And, uh, but we had got a bad run to where we had an aisle or a middle or a window in a middle. And we would usually take turns because our travel agent would never know which, who got the middle or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so finally it was, he he thinks he had sat in the middle a lot more than I did, and I obviously thought I had sat in the middle a lot more. And so I'm the first person on the plane. We were running late coming from somewhere and I'm completely exhausted. And I jump in the window seat, even though I did have the uh, middle seat this particular trip. And when he gets in there, we always threaten to call the stewardess because of someone sitting in our seat. And... <laughs> He, you know, when they give you, when you give them your ticket, they just rip off the end and they hand it to you. Right. And so he comes in there, he goes, you're in my seat. And I said, no, it's your time to sit in the middle. And he goes, no, don't make me call the stewardess. And so he, right as he reaches to push up the stewardess button, I yanked the 
end of that ticket out, chew it up and swallow it. No, you do. <laughs> and so I said, what are you going to tell them? They're going to kick you off the plane. You don't have a ticket. And so he said he would gladly sit in the middle seat because, and this is, this is the embellishment that I'm talking about. He says that the reason he was late is he had to stop and go to the restroom. And so he had it somehow in his shirt and he says it went in the urinal and he goes, I don't know how many plane tickets you've ate, but I promise you that was the wrong one. But that was just some of the, some of the fun we had going across the country together. But all that last was, I'm sure I'm going to write it off as a lie just so I can feel better about myself. It's mentally. But, the, you get but that is the only plane ticket I've ever eaten. <laughs> That's good to know that it, didn't it was worth it. The two and a half hour nap was, was worth it in the end. <laughs> Regardless of where the ticket had been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> All right. Love that partnership. Love the partnership with your wife. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Ariat now. Uh, we are counting. It's been almost five years that you've been with Ariat. You have your brand in relentless. Where did this start? Oh my God. I'm about. We're going down memory lane a little bit. Yeah. Well, first of all, I can't believe it's already been five years because it just, I feel really spoiled now. Anytime I go through a Western store and look at any other clothing because of Harriet and just the technology that they bring to the table. And when we uh, first started partnering, there was uh, such a, their testing was unbelievable. And I think that was what impressed me more than anything, even the technology that was at their disposal, but the way they wanted to test it and not just test it in the lab, but cowboys to test it. They wanted to know that it was exactly what, you know, fit the need for cowboys and cowgirls out there. And I obviously had that in mind with relentless from the start because, you know, everything that was made was usually made in, New York or, you know, mainstream stuff that sometimes didn't translate well when you were roping, riding, all kinds of equestrian disciplines. And uh, that's when we got together and we made the Relentless products. We've, uh, but not only just the Relentless products, but we've collaborated on all kinds of other, you know, features of regular area shirts. And it's just been a great partnership for me. Love it. Uh, you and I must have been two years ago. We were going through South Point together in one of the setups, and you're taking me through uh, some of the, the different items that you have now in the Relentless line. Do your favorites always change, or you kind of always grab the same shirt, the same jeans? No, they do. They do change. Um, obviously, I wear it all, but um, one of my favorites right now. I'm really liking the snaps and. So we have a couple snaps in every line of relentless seasons and, uh, but I still have the traditional buttons and always wear them. But right now the snaps are kind of my hot, hot go-to. There you go. Trendsetter. Everyone's going to be in the snaps. As soon as the <laughs> video's out, everyone watches it. You're going to see a lot more snaps. I, I love it. I'm a fan. I tell you, I'm even just amazed every time we get a new line of boots uh, because I see them, um, you know, on paper and I see different designs and different combinations, but it's just, it really is amazing to watch it all come to pass and to see the footwear uh, in Relentless has been more than I could have ever dreamed to. I get compliments all the time from guys that have never worn, you know, the performance stretch pants, you know, that, that we have in the relentless line. So it just, you can't, I have so much confidence, I guess, because I know who my partners are when it comes to technology. And I know that when I tell, you know, friends and family and uh, fans about these clothes that they're going to love them because they just are light years ahead of everybody when it comes to technology. Do you give a lot of Christmas gifts that are area and relentless? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. No, that everybody knows they may be getting some relentless stuff when it comes to that time of the year. That's a good thing though. Yeah. Sometimes you know what you're getting and you're like, oh man, I know what this is gonna be, but shoot, that's like okay, yeah. bring it on. Got the, got the fingers crossed for those relentless exotic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
Well, Trevor, we're gonna play a fun little game real quick. I'm just gonna show you a photo, definitely ones you've seen before. I may or may not have gotten most of them off your social media, but just first word that comes to mind when you see the photo. You ready for this? All right, all right, I guess we are. Here we go. Oh, that was a fun weekend. That's family right there. That's right. These horses right here, that's key. That's yeah. What's funny about that picture right there is Treston is still riding that horse. That picture was from about two or three years ago, and Treston's going to be riding that horse he's on at the junior high finals too this year. So that's that's cool. She's been with us a long time. Oh, good deal. Good deal. All right. You might have seen this place before. Does that look familiar? Yeah, that looks familiar. <laughs> That, uh, man, I just think about the fans. You know, I rodeo everywhere, but the fans are what make make that place what it is and what it means is, I mean, yeah, we've got a lot of money up, but it's the fans when I think about that place. Mm -hmm. Still give you the chills when you see those photos? It does. I mean, I, I feel a little pressure in my chest. I'm not going to lie every time you see a Thomas and Mac photo. <laughs> I believe it. Oh, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. That's 2013. I remember she picked a prettier gray horse. We had two gray horses and <laughs> she obviously grabbed the prettier one. Well, of course. Yeah. What's one word that, uh, first word you think of when you see that? Shoot. That's just, that's, that's my partner right there. I was just, that year was the time that, uh, it just kind of got to have the re roles reversed just a little. And I was still living out my dream, but mm -hmm. she was able to do that too. That was, I was so awesome. That's so cool. I love that so much. All right. Look at that stud. I mean, yeah. sure. Two studs, but we're just, <laughs> yeah. that, uh, I think of hard work when I see that picture out there because everybody, if you haven't ever seen the video of Texaco Unbridled, it's on YouTube. I, ro I rode him uh, without a bridle at a horse show. And just because that's the confidence I had in that horse, but it didn't come easy. I had a, that, that was one of the best tie down horses I ever had. And it was the hardest one I've ever had to train. I learned like say more about training horses through that one little guy right there that was barely 14 hands tall than I did the other ones put together. Probably he was definitely a challenge. Man. Hey, good things are worth it, right? Cause that's right. What a horse he was. Well, we saw a few of these. <laughs> that's some more hard work right there. <laughs> yeah. We'll give you two words. Hard work. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll give you both of those. Um, I know you said you've got some of these, the rest are in that NRS showroom, but, uh, how often do you go look at them? Do you rent them out ever? Have you ever been asked that? Like, hey, can I can I borrow one of your buckles? Oh, uh, just just family, just family. <laughs> That's a good call. You gotta protect. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be a lot of security cameras around these, right? I hope a lot of insurance and security cameras. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a good call. All right, I got one more for you. That was my hero right there. That was such an honor that time I top hand, you know, because that, that guy right there, although we worked both ends of the arena, you know, uh, separately, it was, he, he was the one who got me up and got me going more times than he could ever known because of what he accomplished made me think that it was possible to do that. And then some, and so I, although we never worked the same events, I owe a lot of my success to him. Gosh, from the buckles to this award, all of it so well deserved. And I got to say, as a true fan, it's been an honor just to watch you over the years and everything you've done. And I know you're semi-retirement now, but man, every time I see your name pop up that you're going to be at a rodeo or wherever it might be, it sure makes it fun. So I sure appreciate it. Appreciate wow. everything you've you've done for the sport. And uh, don't stay too busy now, okay? Like do you, maybe a vacation. Yeah, vacation for sure. But this has been a little bit different for me because all my uh, horses in the barn now are young. And so I'm kind of getting into the training a little more that I was 
kind of had didn't have time for in the past. And so it's back to square one for me. I spend the better part of my day getting taught by horses again. It's been, it's been fun. Well, we sure love it. And uh, we'll have to do this again soon. We'll bring the family on. You got it. Anytime. Anytime. Awesome. I appreciate it, Trevor. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye.